Hey there YouTube, Scott Stevens here. How you doing this evening? Welcome to another edition of WWE 2K22 Universe. This is episode 72 of Universe. And tonight we have World Wrestling Federation action coming at you. Saturday night's main event. And as usual, we have a bang up card for you. Just a couple of weeks away from Elimination Chamber. And let's see, two weeks away from Elimination Chamber. I put up a new video today, some breaking news on EA Sports College Football 25 was confirmed today by Matt Brown. Matt Brown, if you've been following EA Sports college football in any way shape or form you know that matt brown is an insider to the game he gets all of the information from ea and he's usually the first one to break news other than ea themselves and uh he uh released today that um the full release the full reveal will be coming in may may 16th and the game is scheduled to be released on July 19th. So, that's pretty cool. We all know I will be live streaming it the minute it goes live. That'll be a Midnight Madness live stream. I've done them before. And... Well, they kind of suck, honestly. <laughs> but they're fun to do. But... uh yeah, they were they were a lot more fun when I was younger, <laughs> but they're uh, they're fun to get out there and uh, have the uh, you know be the first one to, one of the first ones to get content out. Hey, buddy, thanks for joining. Hey, Godspeed, thanks for joining, man. Hope you're doing well over there tonight. Still in Philadelphia. Uh, I got news from the uh, production company today, which. She, they, uh, they love the Twister Town pilot, the layout, and everything for the TV series. Um, very strong is the word that she used, which is always nice to hear. All right, there's a, a poll up. I'm going to add another show. There's a couple of things I want to get to before we get into the action. Doing good. God's be doing good. Thank you for asking. Hope you're doing well. Um, first of all, there's a, uh, a poll on the, uh, on the page here. I'm going to... Uh, add a third show to the universe. Hey there, Floyd. How you been, man? Welcome back. Haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, I put up a poll to decide what the next show is going to be, ECW, NWA, or AWA. ECW had a huge lead, and all of a sudden, bang, 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 they're all tied now, NWA and ECW. So get your votes in uh, on that, too. And I'm going to ask you guys for a little bit of input because I'm finding that having two pay-per-views per month is uh, it's a little much and they're coming up fast so i'm going to put a poll on this as well too but uh i'm thinking about combining wcw and wwf into the same pay-per-view and just having one pay-per-view per month what do you guys think about that and again I'll, I'll make a poll asking you what you think about that so we'll we'll have only one pay-per-view per month but it will do the wwf title matches and the WCW title matches. The only problem with that is it's a pay-per-view of all title matches then, and then there's no grudge matches or anything like that. So uh, there's pros and cons to both, doing it both ways. But ever since I added the second pay-per-view, and we've only done one, but it just seems like we're coming up on it really quickly, and I'm having a hard time focusing from one organization to the other trying to figure out what the pay-per-views are going to be. So I, th I thought maybe we could combine them into one per month, and that would be a little bit easier. I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys think? I'll put up a poll and, and uh, get your input on it as well. Uh, but I am going to add a third show so we can split up the rosters even more. It's between ECW, NWA, and AWA. That poll is currently up on my channel. And uh, last I looked, it was a dead heat between ECW and NWA. I'm leaning towards ECW. That would be my vote. All right, so Saturday night's main event is what we have coming up for you tonight. Tonight's match preview, card preview, is brought to you by the WWE Shop. Use the link in the description below 
to get to the WWE shop and take advantage of the daily specials they have on their website. You can get all your favorite WWE apparel, merchandise, and memorabilia right there on the WWE shop by using the link in the description below. Also, my merchandise store is now open for the next 10 days. You get 15% off your orders. Uh, all my book covers are now on there in different types of merchandise and lots and lots of Tolland Twisters merchandise. Of course, they are the baseball team in my novel, Twister Town. So lots of stuff on there. Uh, 10 days, the next 10 days, 15% off all orders. And don't forget this Sunday, this Sunday, I'll be at the FWE Benefit Wrestling Show in Oldsmar, Florida for the Moffitt Cancer Center. I'll be doing taking part in the meet and greet before the show. And a portion of my book sales will go into that donation being made to the Moffitt Cancer Center. So it's going to be a good time on Sunday. And that's all that. That's Everything is covered. That's everything I wanted to tell you. So let's start the show. And then we'll start the action here on Saturday night's main event. You see Mr. T. I didn't even give you the preview, did I? <laughs> we'll do that in a second. I have to say the WWE shop before I do the preview, or I forgot to say the WWE shop. And then today I forgot to do the preview. Sometimes I act like I'm still a noob on here. Good Lord. We'll do it. We'll do a preview here in a moment. But it's a sellout crowd. I've gotten word. Saturday night's main event. Everybody wants to be a part of it. The stage is set. We are ready for action here tonight. The crowd is practically deafening. They've been waiting for this one. Well, they let's have. Give the people what they want. We're live in Hartford, Connecticut at the Hartford Civic Center. I've been there many, many times. Used to go see the Hartford Whalers play there. Remember them? Yep. All right, let's take a look at the action. We got Mr. T taking on Greg the Hammer Valentine, Bruno San Martino. He's squaring off against Pat Patterson. Tito Santana, your Intercontinental Champion, has a non title match against the Boogeyman. We have the Killer Bees squaring off against the Dirty Dogs. The genius Lanny Poffo will be here. He will be squaring off against the Iron Sheik. Jim the Anvil Nightheart, he'll face George the Animal Steel. Mr. Fuji battles Ken Patera. And tonight's main event, Pedro Morales battling Sergeant Slaughter. All right, Mr. T taking on Greg the Hammer Valentine to start things off here at the Hartford Civic Center. Sold out crowd for World Wrestling Federation's Saturday night's main event. I'm going to go with Greg, the Val Greg Valentine to get the victory. What do you guys think? Mr. T, though, he's been on a pretty good run here in the World Wrestling Federation since he signed up. And he's got a couple of impressive wins so far. He's currently involved in a feud with Roddy Piper. I'm picking Greg Valentine as my pick for victory. Let me know who you guys think is going to get the win. Let's send it down to ringside here in Hartford. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 225 pounds, Mr. T. If you have a problem and no one else can help, if you can find him, maybe, just maybe, you can compete against Mr. T. You're pity any <laughs> fool who opposes this man. Mr. T pity Godspeed and Floyd both say that Mr. T is going to get the victory over Greg Valentine here. I've been looking forward to this one. T's been on a good run since coming into the World Wrestling Federation. From Seattle, Washington, weighing in at 253 pounds, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Ever since I took my spot here at the commentary table, I have wanted to call this match. I cannot wait to finally do it. Greg the Hammer Valentine. 
Looking to dish out some punishment on Mr. T. The competition level has never been higher, but this guy's ready to prove he can hang. Sellout crowd here in Hartford. And here's a superstar that is There's the bell. We are underway. Mr. T and Greg the Hammer Valentine. I'll tell you a little tidbit about the Hartford Civic Center. I don't know if you remember back in, I believe it was 1979. Nice escape. When the uh, Hartford Civic Center roof caved in. 1977, maybe, 1978, 79, somewhere in that area. I was at the Coliseum that night with my uncle. Earlier in the evening, we were at a UConn basketball game. And the game got over at about, I don't know, 10 o'clock, I guess, something like that. And uh, sometime overnight, the roof collapsed under the weight of the snow, and there was some serious uh, building flaws in the roof. You can look it all up. It's all documented on, online. And uh, the roof collapsed. And you could actually see it where where it collapsed. The uh, It collapsed in the center, and it forced all of the corners straight up in the air. like a, So they look like a big A sticking up. And you could actually see it from my uncle's house because we lived uh, pretty close by. And I woke up in the morning, and we heard on the radio the roof collapsed. And you look out the window, and you could see the roof just sticking up. It was... Just thinking about what could have happened, man, if it would have happened four or five hours earlier. No, I did not, Godspeed. I, I did not see anything about what happened. What what happened? I didn't even hear anything about it. Greg Valentine stomping on the fingers of Mr. T. Now slamming a cranium into the, the mat here in Hartford. And Mr. T being controlled here. You gotta be a heavy hitter to get Mr. T reeling like this. Ah, cranking the head. Cover, cover. Valentine's gonna go for the cover. The Only a one count. T kicks out. And harder to kick out of. T blocks it, comes back with a right hand. Wow, nice suplex there by T. Double axe handle to the face by Mr. T. Shoulder tackle. Valentine's down again. Greg. Wow, he ducked out of the first one. Took a flying body tackle. On the second one, Mr. T with some shoulder blocks. And he is really taking it to Greg Valentine right now. T's going to go for the cover. He's got the shoulders down. The leg is hooked. And Greg Valentine kicks out just before the count of three. T's climbing up to the top rope. Diving elbow across the chest. Valentine with a reversal. Nice reversal there by T. Turns it into an arm drag. Leg drop across the elbow. Big elbow to the neck there by Valentine. That does sound weird, Godspeed. <laughs> Greg Valentine locking in the figure four. He loves that figure four. He's got it locked in the middle of the ring. Look at T screaming in pain. Those little pencil legs. Lots of pressure on the knees. Referees right there. And T throws a right hand. Connects with Valentine's jaw and he's forced to break the hold. So how are things going, here. Floyd? Haven't seen you in a while. T's dropped throat first. T slamming Valentine's head into the canvas. That's odd, Godspeed. <laughs> Sounds kind of stupid. Big body blow by Mr. T. 
He's got Greg the Hammer Valentine up. Fireman scary suplex. Mr. T's going to go for the pinfall. We may have another upset here for Mr. T. We do. Wow, Mr. T continues this impressive run here in the WWF with a three count on Greg the Hammer Valentine. Here is your winner, Mr. T. Wow, Mr. T. Definitive win over Greg Valentine there. He's been on a pretty good run. That was a good match. Oh, that's cool, Floyd. Hope you're feeling a little bit better. Three stars is your official match rating. In the opening match of the evening, Mr. T continues his hot streak here in the World Wrestling Federation. Getting a three count on Greg the Hammer Valentine. I'm calling that a pretty big upset. But... He was the favorite coming in, so what do I know? Next up, we got the living legend, Bruno San Martino, battling Pat Patterson. I'm going to go with Bruno San Martino as my pick to get the victory here. Let me know who you guys think is going to get the win. Floyd, Godspeed, everybody's saying Bruno. So Bruno's the heavy favorite coming into this one. Pat Patterson is going to have his work cut out as he steps into the ring with the living legend. Let's send it down to ringside here in Hartford. Saturday night's main event, Patterson and San Martino. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Weighing in at 317 pounds, Bruno San Martino. The arena's buzzing, social media's buzzing, a big fight feel in a main event level match. It is indeed a main event level match. No, Godspeed, they're not, but they're hanging on by the skin of their teeth. The only way they can make it is if they win three straight, the last three, and Washington loses the last three. That's it. That's the only hope we have now. So one loss for the Devils and they're done, or one win for the Capitals and we're done. Weighing in at 297 pounds, Pat Patterson. Jack's done for the year. They shut him down. Matter of fact, he had surgery today on his shoulder haven't heard anything about how that went but yeah that's the only way they can make it is we have to win three straight Washington has to lose their last three any variation that does not happen of those two and then we're done so essentially we're done not mathematically yet but one Washington win will take care of that or one loss by us, we'll take care of it. What a disappointing season. What are you, expecting from this you know, it's funny. I was just thinking last night, well, nobody even remembers. The, the Devils went undefeated in the preseason. Undefeated. Came into the season, everybody was healthy. They were on a roll. Jack was scoring two points a game. Then Dougie Hamilton got hurt, and everything was right down to shitter from that point forth. We, we got off to a pretty good start to the season. And, I mean, we're undefeated in the preseason. Devils have never had an undefeated preseason before. And I know that doesn't mean anything, doesn't count for anything, but it was impressive to see coming into the season that had very high expectations. Dougie, once Dougie got hurt, everything went down the shitter. One by one. Big suplex there by San Martino. Nice drop toe hold there by Pat Patterson. Big shots to the face. Couple to the body. Pat Patterson. Look at the boot to the back of the head. And Bruno's down. Pat drops an additional knee onto the kidney. And he's talking shit to the fans at ringside right now. Patterson feeling pretty good about himself. Referee's way out of position as he goes for the cover. Not even a one count. Speaking of the Devils, 
Reminder, tomorrow's live stream is at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, Devils have three games left. I still watch them, whether they're out or not. So, 1 o'clock. And then the last game of the season is Monday, so after that, I'll go back to the 6.30 streams every night. No more afternoon streams. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock. Big right hand to the face. Bat Patterson. San Martino blocked the second one. Hey, Jay. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Hope you're doing well tonight. Oh, this is your first Saturday night main event. Oh, yeah? Okay. Uh, glad you could join us live tonight. We just had the first match of the evening. Mr. T beat Greg Valentine. Bruno just slammed Pat Patterson's head into the ring post and Pat's been busted open. This is the second match of the evening. Ref's count is at seven. If Bruno stands there, he, he might get a count out. Count is at eight. Patterson's stunned and bleeding, but he's back in the ring in the count of eight, and he comes in firing. Drop kick to the knee. Took Bruno's knee out and goes for the cover. And the living legend kicks out at the count of two. Pat Patterson, several right hands to the side of Bruno's head. You can see the blood pouring down the right side of Pat Patterson's face. Looks like his temple area, maybe the side of his eye. Caught that ring post. Bruno put up a knee. Pat walked right into it. Snap suplex by San Martino. Bruno's going to go for the cover. The referee's right there, but not even a one count. A bloody Pat Patterson kicked out right away. Now San Martino heading up to the top rope. Patterson's still down. Diving elbow. Pat rolled out of the way. Bruno got nothing. Pat Patterson, arm ringer, wrist lock. Stomping on the shoulder. Lots of pressure under that stomp. Boot to the face, Bruno reverses him, nicely done. Bruno Sammartino, bear hug, he's got it locked in. Patterson screaming in pain, he can't breathe. He can reach the rope, but I don't think he knows where he is. And he throws a headbutt, and that forces Bruno to break the hold. I don't know why more people didn't do that. Back in the day when they were locked in that bear hug. Seems like an easy escape to me. Patterson with a knee to the kidneys. And Patterson's going to go for a cover again. Bruno grabs the rope and the referees stop counting. Big elbow across the chest by Patterson. He's working his way up to the top rope. Nope, he's not. What is he doing? He's just sitting there staring at Bruno. That's a little weird. Patterson up on the second rope, posing for the fans at ringside. Bruno's getting up to his feet. Pat doesn't see him. And he took a shot to the kidney. Bruno with a chop to the throat. Up walked right into Pat's elbow. Several left hands, right hands. Blocked by Bruno. These two going back and forth. Toe to toe. Bruno warming up the arm. Close line. Patterson's down. Sam Martino with the arm breaker and flailing away several right hands to the side of Patterson's head. Sam Martino looking to lock him in. Patterson got behind him. Russian leg sweep by Patterson. This has been a fantastic match. Bruno San Martino, the heavy favorite, coming in. Patterson goes for the cover. Shoulders are down. Leg is hooked. And a count of two and a half. Patterson can't believe it. Thought he had him there. It was close. Bruno's kicking out slower and slower. Patterson's got the legs. He's trying to roll them over. He's thinking about a Boston Crab. And he's got it locked in. 
Pat Patterson has a Boston crowd. Look at him. Oh, he cinched it in hard, and Bruno got a hand under the rope, and the referee forced Patterson to break it because he had it locked in good. Airplane spin now by Patterson, and Bruno San Martino is in a world of trouble here. And now Patterson going the opposite way. This might be all for Bruno. Patterson's dizzy himself. All he needs to do is fall the right way. Right across Bruno. He's got the leg hooked. And a victory secured. Pat Patterson with an upset. A three count on Bruno San Martino. A bloody Pat Patterson with a three count on Bruno San Martino here in Hartford, Connecticut. He was the heavy underdog coming in, and he got the win. It was indeed. I'm calling it an upset. Yep. It was a good match. Three and a half stars is your official match rating. Pat Patterson gets the win over Bruno San Martino. Bruno cannot be happy about that. That was a good match, though. Hopefully, maybe we'll see more between those two. All right, coming up next, we have the Intercontinental Champion in the house. Title's not on the line, but Boogeyman looking to secure himself a shot at it. Tito Santana taking on the Boogeyman. What do you guys think? Who's going to get the win? I'm going to go with the Boogeyman. I think he's going to cause all kinds of chaos in the Intercontinental Championship picture by getting a win here tonight and forcing a title match on Tito at some point. Floyd says Tito's going to get the win. Let's send it down to ringside and get your introductions. Godspeed says Tito's going to get the win as well, so he's the favorite coming in. He's got the championship advantage. Fist to fist, toe to toe, blood for bone. Pat Patterson beats, beats Bruno Sammartino. Fans here in Hartford love Tito Santana. Keeps his focus 100% of the time. That's why he's the champion. If you haven't read Tito's book, it's called Don't Call Me Chico. You should definitely check it out. It's pretty good. I know he has a whole bunch of signed copies that he sends out. You can uh, order them through Facebook if you talk to him on Facebook at all. The Boogeyman trying to secure a shot at the Intercontinental Championship. He'll have to beat Tito Santana first. He is the underdog coming into the bout. Fans here in Hartford really don't know what to make of him. That might be true. Worms at those health food stores you go to. Absolutely not. <laughs> There's Tito Santana. Title is not on the line here tonight in Hartford. Here 
There's the bell. We are underway. Boogeyman went for a chop to the throat. Tito dodged it. Not a good start for the Boogeyman. Once again, Tito slamming his head into the top turnbuckle. And Santana now. Second rope, and he's going to go for the Dragon Sleeper on the Boogeyman. They should hold that hold a little longer, make it a little more realistic. Experience and knows in this business you're either stepping up or being stepped on. Rolling oh, snap mare by Tito. He is well in control here at the start of the match. Right hand to the side of the head. Tito Santana. Wow, what a suplex! Right down on the neck of the boogeyman. Tito's gonna go for the pin. It's a two count. That was a powerful suplex right down on the neck. Santana's up on the second rope. Diving knee right to the forehead of a fallen boogeyman. Tito went for the drop kick to the head and missed. Solid right forearm to the side of Tito's head. The boogeyman has turned things around. There's a boot to the face. Tito's down once again. Uh-oh, Santana up and over. DDT. Boogeyman face first into the canvas. And Tito's going to try and make it into a win. One count only. He did not. Santana with the armbar takedown. Into a Fujiwara armbar. They get so excited over that. That and the fall away slam. Boogeyman with an elbow to the midsection. Nice hip toss. Wow, Tito came down hard. Boogeyman Irish whipping Tito hard into the corner. Follows him in. And he's going to Irish whip him to the other corner. He's going to follow him in again. Huge splash. Right to the chest, Tito took the full brunt of it. But he gets a boot up. Tito with the reversal. Surfboard. Face plant. That'll knock you silly. Santana goes for the pin. And he got him. Wow, he rode the surfboard face plant to a victory. We don't see that as a finishing hole very often. Tito Santana with the win over the Boogeyman here in Hartford. Tito Santana. This was as dominant a win as I've ever seen. You don't seen see that used as a finishing hold, finishing move very often. But Tito executed it to perfection. Slamming Boogeyman's face hard into the mat. Stunned him long enough for a three count. Two and a half stars is your official match rating. Tito Santana with the victory. Over the boogeyman. All right. I don't know what we have coming up next. What's next? We got the tag team attraction next. It's the Dirty Dogs taking on the Killer Bees. Brian Blair and Jim Brunzel battling the Miz and Dolph Ziggler. They have Maurice in their corner, and she's always up to no good. For that reason, I'm going to pick the Dirty Dogs as my pick to get the victory. Floyd says the Killer Bees are going to come out on top here tonight. What do you guys think? Who do you think is going to get the victory here tonight? Godspeed says the Dirty <coughs> The Dirty Dogs. Sorry about that. Let me know who you think is going to get the win. Just like the Matadors of Legend, Tito Santana sends Boogeyman back to the darkness in defeat. Nice one. <laughs> You're getting good at these, Jay. <laughs> the following contest is scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring. Accompanied by Marie's at a combined weight of 439 pounds. The Miz and Dolph Ziggler. The tag team division. The Dirty Dogs. Every team needs to deliver an emphatic message each week.
You got to keep an eye on Maurice. She's interfered in plenty of matches. Sometimes to the benefit of the Dirty Dogs, sometimes not so much. She's got them disqualified on at least two occasions. They are ready for battle. And their opponents, at a combined weight of 467 pounds, the B Team! The Killer Bees! The electricity in the arena right now is Mr. T's in the WWE Hall of Fame. Muhammad Ali's in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yet the Killer Bees are not. Somebody explain that to me. B. Brian Blair and Jumpin' Jim Brunzel. They're going to have their work cut out for them here tonight going up against the Dirty Dogs. Blair's going to start things off for the Bees. The Miz for the Dogs. And the Miz goes right after the referee. Blair did too. former tag team champion myself. I have to say these matches hold a special place in my heart. Continuing to attack the neck across the top rope. Snapmare driver by the Miz. He executes those perfectly. The stop in every single part of his body. Now trampling the opposition. Boot right to the middle of the chest. That will get your attention. Miz really pounding away on Miz Brian Blair. Was a perfectly placed target. Slamming his head into the top turnbuckle. The Miz has Blair upside down in the corner. What's he going to do with him now? He's going to choke him out with his boot. Using that top rope for extra leverage. Blair came down on his head. Blair's up and over. DDT. That stung. Pun intended. Blair makes the tag. Here comes Brunzel. Miz is going to stand in there. He's not going to make the tag. Brunzi puts him off the ropes. Went for the back body drop. Miz missed with the clothesline. And Brunzi hits him with the clothesline. Miz head over heels. Brunzel makes the tag. Here comes Blair back into the ring. Tosses the Miz into the corner. And Miz no sells it. Backbreaker there by Blair. There's the tag. Another quick tag by the Killer Bees. Brunzel's back in. Miz with an neck breaker on Brunzel. Oh, what a move. Slammed his face right into his knee. Brunzel has no idea where he is right now. Miz makes a tag. Here comes Ziegler for the first time tonight. Brunzel just flailing away aimlessly. Nice suplex on Ziegler. That one hit the mark. Maurice looking a little bit worried. Out there at ringside, Brunzel makes the tag. Here comes Blair back in once again. Into the waiting arms of Dolph Ziegler. Nice Russian leg sweep. Ziegler's going to go for the cover. It's a one count only. Blair kicked out. The show stealer happy. Oh, not anymore. Walked right into an elbow from Blair. And Blair's got him. Snap suplex perfectly executed by Brian Blair. Blair slams Ziegler's head into the top turnbuckle. And DZ's been busted open. Blair has him in a dragon sleeper. Ziegler's in a little bit of trouble here. Blair should go for a quick cover. He does. Referee's right there, too. It's a two count. Blair can't believe it. He thought he had him. I thought he might be close, too. Makes the tag. Here comes Brunzel. Ziegler makes the hot tag, and here comes the Miz. Ziegler has a chance now to get outside and look at that cut. Have Maurice take a look at it. See if he's all right. The Miz with a suplex on Jim Brunzel. Miz thinks it's time to end things. He's going to climb up to the top rope. What's he got in mind? Diving elbow. He made it clear across the ring. Right to the chest. And Brunzel took the brunt of it. And in a knee to the face. Wow, the Miz really nailed that one. Brunzel's in trouble. 
Miz goes for the cover. Shoulders are down. It's a two count. Brunzel kicked out. Miz couldn't believe he thought he had him. That was a pretty powerful knee to the face. Can't blame him for thinking that. Another snapmare driver, and Brunzel's in trouble. Miz makes the tag. Here comes DZ. Brunzel trying to make the tag, and he does. Here comes Brian Blair. Big right hand to the side of the head by Ziggler. Trying to separate Blair's shoulder. Blair off the ropes. Ziggler went for the elbow and missed. Boot to the midsection. Face plant by Ziggler. Hard. And Brian Blair. I don't think he knows where he is right now. That was a serious face shot to the mat. Miz is going to rip his arm right off. And then make a quick tag to Ziggler. He's back in once again. Went for the big knife edge chop and missed. Still has the advantage though. Nice takedown. Waist lock takedown there by DZ. The show stealer Irish whips. Brian Blair hard into the corner. Following him in. Blair blocked it. Nice right hand to the face. Blair double underhook suplex. Brian Blair is known back in the day. Not really so much during his killer bees days, but in his singles competition days, Blair had a solid punch. Jumping DDT by Dolph Ziggler. He's going to go for the cover now. Blair's in trouble. And it's a one count. Brian Blair was quite a fighter back in his younger days. He, he loved the singles competition. He loved to shoot on somebody, too. He was one tough customer back in the day. Most people only know him for his time with the Killer Bees. Blair walks Ziggler over to the corner, slams his head into the top turnbuckle. And now Blair working on the shoulder. He's got Ziggler upside down in the corner. What's Blair going to do? Oh, nothing. Ziggler got a boot to the head. Nicely done. Follows it with a lariat. Blair never saw it coming. But he makes the tag, and here comes Brunzel. While Ziggler was playing it up for the crowd, Blair made the tag. Arrested Brunzel comes in. And he's right on top of Ziggler. Surfboard. Face plant. We just saw Tito Santana end his previous match with that move. Nice reversal there by the show stealer. Ziggler's going to go for the pin. One count only. Big right hand blocked by Brunzel. Right hand of his own. German suplex by Brunzel. He's got that arm bar locked in. Ziggler's in a little bit of trouble here. Wrist lock arm bar. Here comes the Miz. Ziggler was able to slip underneath. Got away. Miz came in to help out but didn't really do anything to, to try. <laughs> and Ziggler sling, sling shots. Brunzel out onto the floor the hard way. Ziggler follows him out there, but Brunzel was waiting for him. And he tosses DZ across the ring area by his head. Brunzel with a rake of the eye. There's that suplex right down on the neck, hard. Just in front of those steel barricades. Ziggler tossed back into the ring. Brunzy. Getting booed here by the fans in Hartford. That's odd. I think they were telling him, go for the pin, man. Don't be talking to us. Ziegler slamming Jim's head into the top turnbuckle, makes the tag. They're going to double team a Miz off the second rope. Double axe handle down to the elbow area. And the Miz tosses Brunzel out over the top rope, out into the ring apron. Right hand, and Brunzy blocked the second one. Oh, 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 Brunzel got cocky. 
Threw both hands in the air and Miz nailed him. Clocked him right on the jaw. And Brunzel out to the floor. And he took a face first. Snap driver out on the floor. Miz kind of laughing at him there. He deserved that. Miz stomping away on the fingers. Maurice trying to look innocent sitting there. Wow, there's a knee lift. Look at Maurice. Maurice kicked. Maurice just kicked Jim Brunzel and got him disqualified. Wow. Referee was looking. He saw it. And once again, Maurice cost the Dirty Dogs a victory. That's like, I think, the third time she's got him disqualified. It wasn't, it was subtle. She just kind of did a little back kick, but it hit him. And the referee was paying attention and immediately disqualified the Dirty Dogs. Wow. Three stars is your official match rating. That's a crap ending because that could have been a much better finish. But Maurice once again sticks her nose where it doesn't belong. And once again, it costs the Dirty Dogs. So the, uh, the Killer Bees get the win by disqualification. Maurice once again sticking her nose where it didn't belong. And the Dirty Dogs paid the price. The Killer Bees victorious by way of disqualification. All right, that gets us to the intermission part of the evening here on Main Event. Let's take a look at how we got here. Mr. T started things off with an upset win over Greg the Hammer Valentine. Mr. T has been on a roll here lately in the World Wrestling Federation. Pat Patterson in a fantastic match. Bested Bruno San Martino. Tito Santana got a decisive victory over the Boogeyman. And as you just saw, the Dirty Dogs were disqualified, giving the victory to the Killer Bees. Coming up in the second half of tonight's action, we got the genius Lanny Poffo squaring off against the Iron Sheik. Jim the Anvil Nightheart battles George the Animal Steel. Mr. Fuji battles Ken Patera. And in tonight's main event, Pedro Morales battles Sergeant Slaughter. The Dirty Dogs got the win? How'd they get the win? What happened? All right, so now I'm really confused. If the How did the Dirty Dogs get the win? Did maybe Brunzel hit Maurice, maybe? I wish I could go back and look at it. All right, so a very controversial match there. I'm going to have to go back and check that out and see what happened. Maybe he, he hit her by accident. I, I wish they would have left the uh, the result screen up a little longer. It was only up for about two seconds. Yeah, I don't know either, guys. We just, <laughs> I just assumed because it was so fast. It was up so quick and then gone. I assumed it was them. Wow, okay. So the Dirty Dogs got the victory somehow. Very controversial match here on Main Event. Uh, tonight's second half of action is brought to you by Fanatics.com. Use the link in the description below to get to Fanatics.com. They have officially licensed everything. You can get all your favorite NHL, NFL, NCAA, and Major League Baseball apparel, merchandise, and memorabilia at Fanatics.com. Use the link in the description below. They have a different kind of sale every day on their website, so be sure to check it out when you need new apparel. Hey, stupid! <laughs> that reminds me of Alice Cooper. Thanks for joining, man. Hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, so there you have. Use the link in the description below. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. All right, so we are very confused at what happened on that match there. The Dirty Dogs were victorious over the Killer Bees. I thought the Dirty Dogs got disqualified but apparently it was the killer bees who got disqualified it all happened so fast uh, i'm just gonna guess that uh, jim brunzel might have bumped maurice by accident and they get, are the ones that got disqualified i don't know that was crazy 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 not too bad stupid not too bad thank you for asking 
appreciate you coming back. All right, so we're going to start the second half of action here tonight. We have the genius Lanny Poffo taking on the Iron Sheik. I'm going to go with the Iron Sheik. I love you, Lanny. But I got to go with the Iron Sheik for this one as my pick for victory. I like that, Jay. I like that. Floyd says Iron Sheik's going to get the win. Godspeed says Lanny's going to get the win. I'm going to go with the Iron Sheik. So the Sheik is uh, the favorite coming in. We'll send it down to ringside and get your introductions. I like that, Jay. I do indeed like that. That shall be. We shall make yeah, that happen. Now we're talking. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Weighing in at 226 pounds. The Professor... The genius Lenny Poffo. Everyone in this match is competing at such a high level. I predict one of the most... The genius Lenny Poffo. That's what, that's what we're going to do. Time. We're going to do it at... Um, he at knows what it takes to Madison Square Garden, though, the next WWF televised event. Championship wrestling for Madison Square Garden. We're going to have a return no disqualification match. Killer Bees against Gentlemen, the Dirty Dogs. The winner will get a shot at the tag team title at Elimination Chamber. From Tehran, Iran, in at so it'll be a number one contenders match. No DQ. We'll get right back into that one next week. We'll have a return bout for this match to start with Elimination Chamber implications. So the next WWF televised event from Madison Square Garden, we will have that return no disqualification tag team match. As a number one contender match, the winner... Gets a shot at the Tag Team Championship at Elimination Chamber. Exactly, Jay, exactly. You're looking at a well Here we've got Lanny Poffo taking on the Iron Sheik. The Sheik wearing those curved, pointed boots, and he loves to use them every opportunity he gets. Right now he's on the top rope, diving elbow right across the chest, and Lanny's off to a very poor start here. That's a two count. She can't believe it, but that's really kind of not realistic. He thought he had him after one move. Come on, he's still a human being. Knife edge chop by Lanny. Solid left hand. Another knife edge chop. Well, all right. Well, thanks for stopping in, stupid. <laughs> thanks for stopping in anyway. I appreciate it. Hope you have a good night. May, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Lanny Poffo with a solid right hand goes for the cover. And the Iron Sheik kicks out. Close line by Lanny. A second one. Sheik goes for one himself. He missed. Another close line by Lanny Poffo. Three in a row. The Sheik is down. The genius heads up to the top turnbuckle. Moved out of the way. Up, he didn't even come close to him. That was embarrassing, Lanny. Try it again. He wow. All right, stop it, Lanny. You're embarrassing yourself. That doesn't even make any sense. But he's still in control. Powerful scoop slam on the Iron Sheik. Lanny Poffo has the leg hooked. He's going to go for a pinfall. Wow, two and a half count. Lanny thought he had him. I did too. That was close. Lanny giving... Lessons to the referee on how to count to three faster. Suplex. Lanny Poffo. Knee to the face of a fallen Iron Sheik. Lanny's going to go up to the top rope again. It hasn't worked out so far for him. That one, nope. Came down right on the knees. Wow, that had to hurt. 
did the flip in the air and came right down across the two knees from the Iron Sheik. Oh, there it is, Lanny. Face first into those pointed boots. The Sheik loves to do that whenever he gets the opportunity. And Lanny just got a face full of those pointed boots. That hurts. Not only are they pointed, but they are sharp. And the Sheik's going to go for the pinfall. Two count only. Papo kicks out. Nice hip toss by the Iron Sheik. Boot to the midsection. Double arm hook suplex by the Sheik. Uh-oh, he's going for the camel clutch. The man who invented it has it locked in the middle of the ring, and Lanny Papo is in trouble. Referee's right there. Lanny cannot get away. The Sheik has it locked in, cinching it down in the back of the neck, pulling on that chin. Lanny's in trouble. His fingers were starting to come apart, but he held it for quite a long time. The Sheik's going to hook the leg. He's going to try and get the win, and he does. He rides the camel clutch into a pinfall. And the Iron Sheik victorious over the Here genius winner, Lanny Papo. And nothing to scoff at with that win, gentlemen. The Sheik looking into the camera, throwing like out some warnings for the WWF superstars here. We are live in Hartford, Connecticut, and the Sheik says, Yeah, you with the belt, I'm coming after you. Sellout crowd here in Hartford. Booing the Sheik, he doesn't care. He got the win over Lanny Papo. Lanny did pretty good. He got off to a pretty good start. But ultimately did not get the win. Three stars is your official match rating. The Iron Sheik gets the win and puts the rest of the locker room on notice. Hey, just a reminder, I put up a new video today. We got some new information on the EA Sports College Football 25. I put up a new video today. It's only like 25 seconds long. Uh, these people put up these 8-minute, 10-minute videos to give you new information, and it's only one piece of information. I, I can't bother you guys with that type of shit, man. We got new information that was released this morning. I made a 20-second video. I think it's 22 seconds. Got the information out for you. We got the full reveal date and the game release date. So make sure you check that out on my channel. And I, I can't wait, can't wait for the college football game to come out. Strong as iron, but ruthless as a cobra, the Iron Sheik outsmarts the genius decisively. Lanny would appreciate that headline, Jay. <laughs> All right, next up we got Jim the Anvil Nightheart taking on George the Animal Steel. Godspeed says George is going to get the victory. I'm going to go along with that pick. What do you guys think? Let me know who you think is going to get the win. George the Animal Steel. Or Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Floyd says Jim's going to get the win. Coming in with brute power. So the animal is the favorite slightly coming in. Let's send it down to ringside here in Hartford and get your introductions. Do you like the arena, Jay? A force to be reckoned with. Yeah, whoa. Come on, let's go. All right, that's it. You know, Jim the Anvil Nightheart guy has held the national shot put record. He spent some time in pro football and indeed can throw anybody around. One of the most intimidating superstars you'll find. That's cool, man. That's cool. I'm glad. There he is. Opponent from Detroit, Michigan, weighing in at 340 pounds, George the Animal Steel. 
Ruthless aggression is alive. I don't think George knows where he's going. Superstar is living proof. Ruthless aggression is overrated, Saxton. Whatever happened to being ruthful? How come nobody ever uses that word anymore? <laughs> We're live at the Hartford Civic Center. I've been to the Hartford Civic Center many, many times over the course of my life. It was a couple hours away from New York City. I had an uncle that lived in Hartford where I used to go visit him quite often. I used to go to Hartford Whalers games. I'd go to see the WWF events there as well. It's always a fun time. That was back in the days when the main event wasn't the last match of the evening. I don't know how many of you guys remember that. They used to do the main event either right before intermission or right after intermission. But back in the day when I was a kid, it wasn't at the end of the card. I never understood why that was. People would leave after the main event, and that's why they eventually started putting it at the end of the show. Never made sense to me. <laughs> well, especially when they did it before intermission, half the people wouldn't come back after intermission. George the Animal Steel has Nightheart up and drops him throat first. Across the top rope, but Anvil got an elbow up. Stopped the animal in his tracks twice now. Nightheart retaliates. Gut wrench suplex by Nightheart. He's going to go for the cover right away. It's a little early. And he only gets a one count. impressive kick out this late. He must have seen that coming. Still choking Anvil out. Referee looking right on, not doing anything about it. And George drops a knee across the elbow. He's going to go for the pinfall. Not even a one count. George knows it's a little early in the match. Solid right hand to the forehead. The Anvil is down. But he gets up swinging. Gut wrench suplex by Anvil. These are sports that require short, concentrated bursts of energy. You need to grind this out and force the Anvil to tire out. He could pin his opponent. Jim's going to go for the pin. Not even a one count. Animal rolled out of the way, went for a clothesline. Anvil blocked it. And he tosses the animal over the top rope. He's out on the ring apron. And Neidhart. Sling shots him out to the floor the hard way. Boot to the midsection. Anvil has him up. What is he going to do with him? Power bombs his head on top of the ring apron and swings him around and slams his head into it once again. Jim Neidhart really taking it to George the Animal Steel here. He's got to have a concussion after that. He may not know what city he's in right now. Nightheart back into the ring. Big right hand turns the animal around. And the an anvil, Cobra Clutch locked in on George the Animal Steel. Swinging him all over the place. And look at the animal nicely done. Turns it into an arm drag to get out of it. Big lariat from George the Animal Steel. This is it. He's going to go for the cover. Two, Two count. Nightheart kicks out. George Steele a little bewildered. Thought he had him there. The Off the ropes. The animal. Splash. Crushed him. Hooks the leg. Tries to turn it into a pin. He got him. George the Animal Steel rides a splash to victory over Jim Neidhart. George the Animal Steel with a splash and a pinfall on Jim the Anvil Neidhart. I got to say that was kind of a weak ending. 
George Steele doesn't care. The official record book says George the Animal Steele was victorious over Jim the Anvil Nightheart. It's a two-star official match rating. The Animal gets the win. Kind of a weak loss there for Nightheart. All right, coming up next, we got Mr. Fuji battling Ken Patera. Very intriguing matchup here. Ken Patera was the United States champion when he was over in WCW before coming over to the World Wrestling Federation when they opened their doors again. Going up against Mr. Fuji. Fuji's had a couple of singles competition matches here in the World Wrestling Federation. He's actually done pretty well so far. Godspeed says uh, Ken Patera is going to get the win. I'm going to go with Fuji as my pick. What do you guys think? Let me know who you think is going to get the win. We have a pick -em match coming in. We'll send it down to ringside here at the Hartford Civic Center and get your introductions. Mr. Fuji. Floyd says Mr. Fuji's going to get the win. I can't remember who he fought last, but he beat him with those bamboo flip-flops. I remember that. Actually, I am Godspeed. I just um, went into my um, franchise, and I made the entire National League um, college baseball teams the American, the American League is still all American League teams because there's not enough save slots to do the entire league. But the entire National League is all college baseball teams, so it's kind of cool. Florida State, Florida Gators, USF, Arizona State. Weighing in at 265 pounds, Ken Patera. I got Michigan in there, Ohio State. The entire National League is all college baseball teams. It's been, and then I did a complete fantasy draft with the rosters. So uh, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun playing it. With all of the college teams, it just gives it a different look, makes it more fun to play. Everything I do at this point, I'm just. Killing time waiting for the college football. I'm going to have two dynasties going on with the college football. I'm going to do the Miami Hurricanes for the live streams. I'm going to try and build the Miami Hurricanes into national champions. And I'm going to have another one that I do off camera because I'm going to be playing the shit out of that game. <laughs> As is everybody else. Ken Patera and Mr. Fuji. I'll be doing a midnight madness stream of college football 25 when it comes out. And uh, we'll go through the game when it first comes out. We'll go through it. We'll uh, check out all the features and the modes and all that stuff on the midnight stream. Kind of take a first look at it. And then uh, the next day I'll start my Miami Hurricane stream. Oh, that's cool, Godspeed. Now oh, you can save a little money that way, huh? Look at this. <laughs> Ken Patera fall away slam on Mr. Fuji. I don't remember who Mr. Fuji's last match was against, but I remember he used those bamboo flip-flops to his advantage. And he got the win, but I can't remember who he beat. Right now, right now he's in a bad way. Patera's going to drop him from a military press. Oh, man, you can see he is feeling it now. Patera's earned a break. Fuji's down, Patera catching his breath. Now he's going to deadlift Mr. Fuji from the mat into another military press. And drops him back once again. 
Yeah, I mean, you're saving a, an entire subscription. Nets go as long as you don't get caught and get in trouble. Ken Patera once again. Fuji high above his head. Third military press. Slap jacked him again. He is really beating the snot out of Mr. Fuji. Now he's got a double-handed choke. Nope. Didn't get the slam part. He got the choke in there, but not the slam. Mr. Fuji turned it into an arm bar to get free. And nice power slam by Fuji. Big chops to the throat. And Ken Patero, there's a roundhouse super kick with those bamboo flip-flops. And Patero with a roundhouse of his own. And Fuji's down once again. Patera, toss suplex. He's got Fuji up on his shoulder. Running power slam, Mr. Fuji. Almost went through the canvas there. Patera's going to go for the pin. Wow, two and three quarters there. Fuji found a way to kick out. Pure adrenaline there, instinct only. Mr. Fuji now with a backbreaker on Ken Patera. Tossing Patera hard into the corner. Fuji tosses him to the center of the ring. Mr. Fuji hopping up to the second rope with those bamboo flip flops. Diving headbutt to the ribs. That caught Patera flush. He's in trouble. Fuji goes for the cover. And Patera kicks out at two. Referee took a long time to get into position. Knife edge chop to the throat like only Mr. Fuji can deliver it. And oh, wow, I thought he had him. Fuji screaming at the ref. I thought he had him there. That was close. Now he's got him by the nostrils and Patera with a body shot to get out of that. Ken Patera. Oh, this is not good at all. The pendulum back breaker stretch. In control here with a Swinging neck breaker by Ken Patera. He likes to use that as a finishing move. He may try and finish off Mr. Fuji here. He's going to drag him around a little bit first. There he goes. He's got the leg hook. Referee pretends he didn't know what was coming. He's way out of position. And it doesn't matter. Ken Patera gets the three count anyway on Mr. Fuji. So he rides the swinging neck breaker to victory. Here is your winner, Ken Patera. He really wanted this one bad. Yeah, what a major win for him here. Pretty solid match between Ken Patera and Mr. Fuji. Patera loves to use that swinging neck breaker as a finishing move, and it worked here tonight in Hartford. Mr. Fuji's short winning streak comes to an end two and a half stars is your official match rating ken patera with the victory over mr fuji so i think that brings us to tonight's main event here on main event it does indeed we have pedro morales squaring off against Sergeant Slaughter here at the Hartford Civic Center. I'm going to go with Sarge as my pick to get the win. Who do you guys think is going to get the victory? Pedro Morales or Sergeant Slaughter? Pedro Morales was the WWF United States Champion until he ran into Andre the Giant. Floyd says Sergeant Slaughter is going to get the win. Andre the Giant dismantled Pedro Morales and Currently, Andre is the WWF U.S. champion. Pedro's trying to fight his way back to another title shot, though. But here he's got Sergeant Slaughter in front of him. Main event here tonight on Main Event Live in Hartford. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Weighing in at 240 pounds. Pedro Morales. The WWE Universe more than ready to see this. Pedro's a big fan favorite here in Hartford. Yeah. 
He'll have a tough opponent here tonight. In Sergeant Slaughter. He's been demanding this match for quite some time, and now he is ready to compete. Be careful what you wish for. Oh, yeah. I am pumped for this guy. There he is. And his opponent from Paris Island, South Carolina, weighing in at 314 pounds, Sergeant Slaughter. Looking out at the countless members of the WWE Universe in attendance, they are all here because of matches like this one. This is a match he's craved for quite some time. He's ready and raring to go. Sergeant Slaughter and Pedro Morales live from the Hartford Civic Center main event here on Saturday night's main event. There's the bell. We are underway. Pedro starting things off with a fireman's carry, bringing the Sarge over to the corner, dropping him snake eyes across that top turnbuckle, and then using a knee to try and choke the Sarge out. Pulling on that top rope for extra leverage. Pedro is going to go for the quick win. Gets a two count. You rarely see a full two count this early. I think Sarge was just taking a break. Pedro with a couple of solid body blows. And there's a punch to the throat and Sarge is down to one knee. Overhand right, double X handle to the back. Pedro pounding away on the Sarge. And Slaughter's down on the mat. Big elbow to the top of the head there by Sarge. Dropping a knee right across the elbow. Pedro turns things around. And he's got the Sarge up. He's going to balance him on the top rope and throw a couple of knees into his rib cage. Several of them. And then follow with a fall away slam. That can't feel good. Wow, he went for a headbutt there and missed. Sarge had the wherewithal to get out of the way. Double punch there to the gut. Doubles over Pedro. Now Slaughter has Pedro and drops his throat across that top rope. Slaughter climbing up to the top turnbuckle. Diving elbow crashes down across Pedro's chest. Knee to the face. Sarge looks like he's starting to get things going pretty well here. He's got that. Oh, there it is. Small package suplex, and he holds it for a pinfall. Good attempt by Sarge. Pedro kicks out. It's not a bad idea. That is a devastating suplex crashing down in the neck. Plenty enough to stun a man for the count of three. Fans here in Hartford not real high on the Sarge. He tosses Pedro hard into the corner, followed it with a knife edge, but Pedro blocked it. And now he's got Sarge to the side. It's a sidewalk slam. Pedro pounding away on the body. Sarge reverses it. Now he's got the legs, and he's going to step through. Surfboard. Face plants. Pedro Morales eats the canvas. Hard, I might add. Sarge is going to go for the pin. He's got the leg hooked. And it's a two count. Pedro kicks out. Sergeant Slaughter trying to figure out what to do next. Ah, oh, here he comes. He knows this move all too well. Camel clutch locked in on Pedro Morales. He doesn't have it as good as he could. Still hurts, though. Pedro's still in trouble. Sarge's fingers look like they're coming apart. Pedro grabs an ankle. Works his way out the back door. 
Hammerlock now by Pedro. Abdominal stretch drops him. Suplexed right onto that hammerlock. Big splash by Pedro. And he's got the sergeant a bad way, and the fans here in Hartford are loving every minute of it. Pedro Morales slamming Sergeant Slaughter's head into the mat. It is Pedro with another backbreaker. Sergeant's in trouble. He might be primed for the Boston Crab. Pedro's going to go for the pin instead. No, he didn't get him two count only. You can. Pedro's got the legs. There it is. He's going to roll him over. Boston Crab locked in, but Sarge had a hand under the rope. Referee forced Pedro to break the hold. Morales hops up to the top rope, super flies him, nailed him, hooked the leg all in the same motion, and Slaughter kicks out. Two count. Pedro almost had him, that was a nice move. Morales, what's he going to do? Snap slam. Sarge slammed his head on the mat on the way down. Slaughter rolled out of the way of that one. There's a big clothesline caught Pedro by surprise. Double punch to the gut. There's a right hand to the head. Slaughter starting to turn things around. There's that fisherman suplex. Slaughter for the pin. Two count. Morales kicked out hard. He still got something left. Slaughter with a big right to the side of Pedro's head. Double kidney shot. Morales is down. Knee to the face. Slaughter followed that up perfectly. Slaughter stepping through again. Another surfboard. Another face plant. Pedro eats the mat hard. Slaughter's going to go for the pinfall. The leg is hooked, the shoulders are down, and Pedro kicks out. Slaughter trying to lock in that camel clutch once again. He's got it hooked. Again, he doesn't have it as tight as he could. But he's still got it nonetheless, it still hurts. Not cinching down as much as he can, but Pedro, you can hear him. Slaughter knew he didn't have it hit, hooked in as hard as it could be. So he let it go, and now he's climbing up to the top rope. Pedro struggling to get to his feet. Sergeant Slaughter, double axe handle, missed everything. Pedro with an elbow to the gut. Pedro got, a, got out of the way of the knee. Slaughter with the... Fisherman suplex there, and he's going to go for the camel clutch one more time. Sergeant Slaughter pulling back on that chin. Again, he doesn't have it cinched in as hard as he could, but that's it. Pedro couldn't take it. He quit. Three times was enough, and Sergeant Slaughter gets the win. Fans here in Hartford not happy at all. Slaughter gets Pedro to tap. Slaughter. That was, guys, me, that was. Sergeant Slaughter gets the win here in tonight's main event. Three camel clutches on Pedro Morales. Finally, Pedro had to tap out. Three and a half stars is your official match rating. Sergeant Slaughter with the victory over Pedro Morales. All right, that brings an end to tonight's action. Let's go back and take a look at what went down tonight here in Hartford. We got things started with an upset. Mr. T. Mr. T has been on a really strong run here in the World Wrestling Federation. He was victorious tonight over Greg the Hammer Valentine. It was a good match. Another great match here, Pat Patterson, victorious over Bruno San Martino. Tito Santana had a non-title match victory over the Boogeyman. 
And in a very controversial match, we, we still don't know what happened here. Somehow the Dirty Dogs were awarded a victory over the Killer Bees. I thought the Dirty Dogs got disqualified, but it was the Killer Bees who got disqualified. And I think Jim Brunzel might have hit Maurice accidentally. Everything happened so fast. I thank 2K for the um, clear results of the match so everybody knew what happened. Either way, the Dirty Dogs get the victory. The Iron Sheik got the win over the genius Lanny Poffo. Lanny had a pretty good match about for about three quarters of it. And then when once the Iron Sheik got tired of playing around with him, he put him away pretty quickly. George the Animal Steel was victorious over Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Ken Patera had a solid win over Mr. Fuji. And in tonight, man, <laughs> that might be it, Godspeed. Jim Brunzel grabbed at Maurice's ass, and that was it. Referee disqualified him. Yeah, that might, <laughs> that could be it. And in tonight's main event, Sergeant Slaughter, as you just saw, got Pedro Morales to tap out, giving Sarge the victory here in Hartford. All right, so let's bump the calendar up to uh, Monday Nitro, which will be tomorrow at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon is the next live stream. And we'll take a quick look at what the matches are scheduled to be. First of all, tonight's recap is brought to you by Godlike Hosting, providing a premium game hosting services, offering high performance, minimal ping, and improved protection. They specialize in Minecraft, Grand Theft Auto, and several other games. You can get a free trial at Godlike Hosting by using the description, the link in the description below. All right, let's see what's on tap for tomorrow's stream, 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Let's see, we got Sting, the young version of Sting, taking on Bruiser Brody. Vern Gagne, scheduled to go up against Nick Bockwinkle. The Blue Blazer, battling Eddie Guerrero. Dusty Rose, your world heavyweight champion, non-title match against Ron Garvin. That should be good. The Road Warriors will be here. No, they won't. Bob Cook and Scott Hall are involved in a feud, so they not, are not going to tag up because the game will crash. So we'll probably just match them against each other. Hollywood Hogan, your WCW United States champion, is in the house. Non-title match against Jerry the King Lawler. Baron Von Raschke takes on Vader. And scheduled for tomorrow night's main event tomorrow at 1 o'clock. The main event, Stan Hansen, to battle X-Pac. X-Pac, of course, still trying to get his hardcore championship back from Goldberg. I think I'm going to add the uh, the EC, like I said, the voting for the ECW and NWA and AWA. Tight voting. I think I'm going to add ECW into the uh, calendar tonight. It's a very, very tight vote. It was tied last I saw, and I get the tie-breaking vote, which I choose uh, ECW just because it's a little bit different. So uh, tonight's action has been brought to you by the WWE Shop Godlike Hosting and Fanatics.com. Use the link in the descriptions below to get to all of those websites and get some fantastic deals from those companies. A reminder, my merchandise store is open for the next 10 days. You can click on the store link at the top of my channel here and get 15% off, off of your orders. All of my uh, book covers are on there and lots of Tall and Twisters merchandise. Of course, the Twisters are from my uh, novel Twister Town. Those are all available. Lots of cool Tall and Twisters merchandise on there. I'm going to get some of it myself. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so uh, let's see. April 14th, I got to keep promoting this all week. Well, the week's almost over. This Sunday, I'll be at the FWE Benefit Wrestling Show in Oldsmar, Florida. Bell time is 2 o'clock. It's a benefit show for the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa. Uh, I will be part of the meet and greet before the show, and a portion of my book sales from that will be added to the donation going to the Moffitt Cancer Center. So I do a lot of work with um, animals, Anything to do with animals and cancer, uh, usually I'm good for making an appearance and helping out. So, love to do that stuff. All right, if you saw anything you like, make sure you drop a like down below. Don't forget to do that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, now's a good time to do that. And once you do that, make sure that you hit the bell icon next to it so you can turn on all of your notifications and not miss out on anything because I have fresh content every single day on the channel. And I go live five times a week. Good night, Godspeed. Have yourself a good night as well. I know you're still in Philly having fun. Good night, Floyd. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Godspeed, for joining. 
Thank you, Jay, for joining and your headlines. Love them. Thank you, Stupid, for stopping in. Appreciate it. I think Bonnie was here for a little bit as well. Thank you, Bonnie. Yes, she was. And uh, thank you to everyone else who stopped in along the way. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Hope to see you tomorrow. One o'clock is the stream for tomorrow. And it will be uh, Monday Nitro. It will be Monday Nitro. So, And Dusty Rhodes will be there. The new world heavyweight champion will be making an appearance. So he ended the long, long reign of Rey Mysterio uh, a couple of weeks ago. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Have a fantastic evening. I'll see you tomorrow at 1 for Monday Nitro. See you then.